Yeah, apologies, Chairman, from Sean Thorogood, Isabel Beacom and Babs Lloyd. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, item number two, to receive uh, reports from county and district councillors. Over to you, David. Just unmuted myself, Chairman. There we are. Um, uh, Chairman, I have nothing particular to offer you from the county council, apart from the huge pot of money that I think you're going to debate later, which is the green the green pot of money. And um, uh, cleverly, uh, Joe Keane worked out that you could bid for £75,000 in only one issue. So I think the, I think you've decided to go for 74. Well, like you, she has, but you, may as a parish, may not. So um, what I'm hoping to do, what I'm hoping you will do later, is to kind of put them in some kind of order of priority from your parish council's point of view. I mean, I, I think they're all splendid ideas. I'm very happy to very happy to sign them off, but um, I suspect there will be a kind of cull when they all come in because I'm, even though a million pounds sounds like a lot of money, I don't think it'll go terribly far with all the ideas that I've seen coming through the pipeline. So okay. if you could come up with a priority list and either you or Joe gets it to me, um, I'll sign it off and get it in tomorrow. Okay, do you want to stick around for that bit then? Because it's, it's fairly... You okay. know, high up on the agenda. Well, that, that, I will stay. I will stay around and listen. Perfect. Yeah. Lovely. Has anybody got any other questions for David, uh, which aren't relating to uh, the seventy-five grand? I think we've started. Well, we, we we continue to do little bits and pieces on the road, try and improve the road surfaces. But I'm not aware of any outstanding major issues in your parish, Jim. Okay, I I do have a couple. Glennis, I can see your hand up. Uh, did you get anywhere with costings for doing something at the top of Billings Hill? Ah, um, I, 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 I put that through the system. They haven't come back to me as yet. Um, I did say that you were going to speed it up by offering a small contribution to the, uh, to the scheme. Um, I'm waiting for them to come back to me. Thank you. Um, it's cosmetic, isn't it, really? I mean, we... Um, it wouldn't be a priority for us, but I can understand it's a mess and we'd like to sort it out. And I've described it to them as just, I, I think just shaving a couple of meters off the corner and putting the curb back a little bit, isn't it really? I mean, I can't believe it's a lot of money, but then these things always surprise me when they come through. Yeah, okay. Uh, anybody else got any questions for David? Joe? I'm making a note of Billings Hill again. Okay. Joe Keane's muted. Yeah, yep. sorry. Um, I had to move because of my removal men in the lounge, in the dining room. Um, the road markings for um, Cock Lake at the um, Stoughton Crossroads and at the bottom of Rug Hill, um, were you able to um, get them onto a list? Yeah, they're on a list, but I don't know where they are on that list. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they're on a list to begin with, that's good I enough mean, to start yeah, with. I mean, ra rather sadly, these things are not instant. Um, no, 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 no. I understand that. Just wanted to make sure they were on a list. Okay, there we are. Excellent. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Uh, anyone else for David? Doesn't look like it. Uh, so, David, if you've got nothing else to report. Um, I'll just tell you what I've been up to since I've been back from holiday. Uh, so I sat in on the cluster meeting, which is for the sort of parishes. They do different ones for the parishes within Sedgemoor. Um, you're, sort of, you're the sort of Axbridge end, I think, aren't you? Yeah, we are sort of Northern Territory. Uh, Axbridge, Cheddar, and those little areas, so and other areas. Um, so we had a presentation about the unitary authority in Somerset, um, which at some stage I think we'll get on the agenda for us all to chat about um, mm -hmm. about one Somerset and uh, that sort of thing. So that's what I've done. What what sat through or something I can't remember what it was. The the, the other alternative bid. Yeah. Well, there's there's the one there's the Somerset County County one. And then there's the the one for Sedgemore, which is we'd like we'd like to we want to uh, get authorities into, get into bed with Taunton Dean and West Somerset. Yeah, uh, the, anyway, uh, but I, I think as a parish council, we'll all discuss that at a, at a, another meeting. Yeah, no, that would be absolutely fine. Um, I, I think what we've all agreed is that we the, the status quo is 
is not um, sustainable. So whatever happens, we will have a unitary authority, whichever shape or form it will. But um, yeah. uh, we we won't be deciding it in within the boundaries of Somerset. It's a it's a national decision, which I think currently yeah. sitting on the prime minister's desk when, with one or two other things that he's got mm. to do. Um, this is just now me reporting to the parish council about what I've been up to. Um, so there was that. Um, everything has basically been about uh, the unitary thing because I, we had a full council meeting on it where we voted unanimously uh, in favour of us doing not the one one unitary and doing two. Uh, so I did a cluster meeting and then... Chairman, with greatest respect, you did have a lot of abstentions, so I'm not sure that that... Yeah, no, we, well, we still... MCON is, I think, the description you're looking for. And they, and they were because mainly they were dual hatters, so a lot of them sat on the district council and the county council, so they didn't feel they could do that. But um, that's that. What else? I, and I also sat through, I sat through the drainage board joint environmental meeting last week, which again was mainly about uh, invasive uh, non-native species and things, so fairly interesting. Oh, here we are. I've got the two unitary things. Votes for in favour 39 three abs absent and four abstentions. Right, anyway, that's what I've been doing as district councillor. Uh, let's crack on, hang on, get my agenda back up. Oh, it's a problem when you've got to do it on two different gadgets. Number three, Chairman, is declaration of interest. There we are, back here, declarations of interest. Are there any? None at all, Chairman. Lovely, super. Number four, minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of August. We have been they have been circulated. Um, a comment was made by Judy Candy. I've changed the minutes to record her comments, which was okay. agreed. Everything's Super. Open. Everything's lovely. Open. We'll sign them tomorrow. Yeah, lovely. Pop by. Um, item number five, matters arising. No, everything's on the agenda. Super. Okay. Item number six, public participation. Does Steve want to say anything? Steve, did you want to speak? Uh, yes, thanks, Polly. I, I was going to talk through that um, paper I sent a while back. Okay. Uh, the update from Green Webmore, is that okay? Yeah, sure. Um, is it three minutes, isn't it, Rod? I've got so I shall. Yeah, three minutes. I shall whiz through, don't worry. Um, <laughs> I hope everyone had a chance to chance to read it. it was, it's titled Webmore Parish Council Green Webmore Update from Green Webmore. Um, and thank you very much for the chance to speak to you tonight, everybody. I thought with uh, there's quite a few new members at the moment, so I thought it was a good chance to, to catch up and, and, and to um, touch base with you all. So I won't, I won't read through it all verbatim because I'd use up all my time. Um, but the introduction page just really just talks about you know what you know already about what you guys already do, what Green Webmore has done in the past. So we've been going for 14 years now. Uh, we free cycle days, energy events, solar installations on the village hall and uh, repair cafes, litter picks, community woodlands, and much more. Um, so but the big, big project, of course, we have at the moment is our zero carbon uh, Webmore project, which we're very excited with, which links into the climate emergency declared at district, county and by your good selves last year. So uh, the background there, talking about the climate emergency that was declared um, and then our scheme, which was launched um, in 2018, so a target for net zero carbon uh, by 2030. And a little piece there about the COVID implications uh, and just to really underline from, from our Green Webmore perspective how, how much more important than ever it is to ensure that we um, uh, push to build as many zero carbon homes, retrofit our existing housing stock, encourage more uh, community owned renewable energy schemes, growing more our own food, um, encouraging cycleways, creating nature recovery network, um, supporting climate adaptation projects that um, uh, we've been involved in already um, over the last year with a, a group that we're involved with uh, called Adapting the Levels. Uh, and then Action, again, just talking now about to reach net zero by 2030 is a huge challenge, as I think we all accept, um, but I think we're all going to have a good go at it. Um, and just listing some of the shovel-ready projects we've got there. So we, we've spoken before about the warmer Webmore scheme, where we've managed to um, upgrade one of the uh, uh, affordable housing up in, uh, up in Mudgley Crossroads and shower housing, uh, hoping to install more PV in more of their properties in Webmore, and we're keen to work with uh, the other, other housing associations. Uh, Worthington Wood, which is another big scheme, which I'm sure is probably on the agenda, or, or Holly will want to mention later on, which is really exciting. Um, and also new renewable energy scoping work, and in other actions there, which we can 
talk about later, you know, the cycle route to sexy school, which, which Emily's progressing, more local food growing schemes, uh, community owned and led aquaponics scheme, perhaps uh, wider energy schemes uh, and uh, woodland projects and so on. And then finally, uh, the funding and next steps part of the, uh, of the letter. So we're keen to have discussions um, in the future with Polly and anybody else that's interested to talk about other ways that we can bring in more money to it so we can achieve the, the net zero target. Um, and next steps. So uh, very happy to work with, with the Parish Council on the um, Somerset County Council Climate Fund, which um, David's already mentioned, um, and also to um, work more closely at, at, at all times with you guys in the future. So that's a whiz through. I'm happy to take any questions. That's very quick. Well done. Thank you. Um, any questions for Steve? Oh, my no, website. Doesn't. Oh. Okay. Go ahead, Joe. It's not, it's, um, it's not a question in, as per se, but obviously uh, we've got a lot of overlap, um, as you'll see when we go through the list, um, which is why I'm quite eager that we, um, you know, this is more for the parish council, it's really the news, Steve, that, you know, having the list and, and knowing where different streams of money can come to together to make some of these projects happen rather than people working individually. So we've got quite a lot of overlap on things. And so, um, you know, this sort of interaction. Um, are you getting um, all of the information that you need from the Parish Council into Green Webmore? Well, we've got a good link, of course, with Sean, which is fantastic. And Judy as well comes to a lot of our meetings. And, uh, yep. and Dave as well down there, we've, we've had discussions with already. So that's been really useful. And I'm really grateful for, for, for all the connections we have. Um, so really, I think just keep talking and, and yeah, we're, we're, we like to think we're, you know, if you want any advice, any help about any climate change issues, just, just give us a shout. I mean, Polly's, you know, gives us a ring every now and then and it's fantastic. And I'm just going to keep those communication lines really open. Good okay. plan. Great Thank stuff. You. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. So if that's all our public participation, uh, we will then move on to item number seven, which is to consider an application to Somerset County Council, Council Climate Emergency Fund. Joe, are you leading this? Yeah, so I don't, um, it was um, earlier today that I sent round a list, um, which was the original list that we'd all put together, that all, all of the ideas that everybody had given, we put in a list when David first introduced the idea of this fund. Um, then the criteria came out and Emily kindly went through the list and uh, aligned those project ideas to that criteria. So I've collated that information and I, I sent out a sort of a, a Word document with a, a spreadsheet in it or a table in it earlier. I also, to help us prioritise, I also showed down the um, right hand side those uh, other funding streams or potential funding streams that um, we could we could utilize alongside these projects. If you add all these projects up, as I've shown on the spreadsheet, they come to £74,000. If you ignore number five, which is the new cycle path to uh, Blackford, between Blackford and Wedmore, because obviously that's got quite, an, quite a high cost. However, that's not to say um, we shouldn't bid for some money towards it, but my recommendation is at the moment, because you can um, use SIL money and obviously other groups looking at it, then potentially um, we, could, we could fund it in a different way. Um, but it's entirely up to the parish council. So in, did, it, did, everybody, did everybody manage to see that document? Anybody not? It came, should have come from your email earlier today. Yep, lovely. <laughs> I'll print it out. So the colour codes were just to do with, I've just bandied um, like projects together with colour. That's, that's all that is. So, um, so it really is a case of, do we want to go for all but project five? Um, or do we, um, but we should put them in priority order, like I said, in the sheet. So it's just now... Anybody want to start their bidding, really, as to what's number one? Emily? <laughs> You're muted. Sorry, muted. So, um, so I'm not bidding at this point. I'm just 
wanting to ask for some clarification and maybe David knows the answer to this. So I've had a look at the uh, application list of projects. Are we meant to apply separately for every project? And should we be, rather than prioritizing in terms of what we would really like, should we, would it be better to prioritize what is more likely to fit the criteria of reducing carbon and you know the other four, three things that are on the on the criteria list. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that. Okay, my 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 gut feeling on this, and and I this is not a definitive answer, but I, I'm essentially a practical politician. So push this, possibly not so much that, and and come up with the schemes in some kind of priority or almost irrelevant currently at this stage is the money, which is the ones that the parish council really want or think are the most important. Not the ones that are most important to succeed, but to the parish, the most important ones. I think from my own point of view, personal point of view, I will fight for the ones that the parish feel are the most important to them, rather than the least expensive, the most expensive, or the ones that fit the criteria. Because uh, I, I've already uh, had some uh, unofficial um, correspondence with the cabinet member who will make the decision and she thought they were all good so um, you know I'm quite happy to sign them off but I would like them to be in some kind of pecking order because I think that makes some sense because this pot will be heavily oversubscribed I mean it's not the only pot of money that will come through because what Polly didn't say is that today uh, well certainly over the last couple of weeks the counties and the districts in the current structure have agreed that they will work together. Uh, nobody's put their hand in their pockets yet. In fact, Somerset are the only, can the only upper tier authority in the country who's put this amount of money into green issues up front because we didn't want it to get lost in the reorganization of local government or indeed in the petty politics, which happens, bless them, even between people on my own side or certainly people of opposite political views about who should fund this climate emergency because it's always assumed that the biggest pays most and we're quite happy but we put a million pounds on the table let's 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 get our paws as much of our much of that into Wedmore as we can and I hear what um, I hear what was said about the cycleway um, uh, th that might be a good priority five or wherever it's going to be on the list because uh, we, we do have separate pots of money for cycleways and I might be able to persuade my colleague, the cabinet member for uh, highways to put one of those schemes forward for Wedmore. But um, so I, I'm, I don't want to monopolize this discussion. It's for the parish to come up with a scheme, to come up with a list to help me, really. I'm quite happy to push them all forward, but I'm sure when it gets to when it gets to October and the, 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 the bidding is closed, then they will sit down and go, right, OK, so wh which other priorities for whichever parish? So, if that helps, well, I hope it does. Thank you. Thank you. So, so yeah. Hi, I just want to point out that the neighbourhood plan, the cycle route, is part of the neighbourhood plan, and as such, I do think it is a priority because it's proven that the village wants it because they voted for it. So I do, I do think, even though it's costly, I think it should be one of our priorities. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. However, we still, <laughs> we still have a couple of issues with that, don't we? As in landowners. Mm. Mm. The but other I one I would see as a, um, has been, openly discussed, you know, particularly through this period of lockdown that in fact the people of the three C's have spoken to me most about is the status of the footpaths. So um, I would sort of say second to, you know, going on, on the basis of what is most important to the parish, it will be project five, the new cycle path to Blackford and project one, improving the footpaths, both of which have funding elsewhere in the council. Um, but for us, those are the in terms of parish opinion, those two are the, are the top. Okay, anybody else? Alistair? 
Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to support the, uh, the project around uh, improving footpaths. Certainly during the lockdown, it was fairly evident that lots of people wanted to get out there. And uh, some of the paths are pretty difficult to uh, navigate these days. Um, I used to live near the South Downs and uh, at that time there was a volunteer group that uh, had training and equipment provided but um, met on a weekly basis to uh, clear footpaths of uh, overgrown bushes and so on. Um, it did seem to me a particularly good thing to do because it encouraged people to walk but it also uh, by using volunteers it gives them some you know people who are still active but perhaps retired uh, gives them an opportunity to give something to the community, which I think you know, is a really good thing to do. So I'd, I'd certainly uh, support that fully. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Can I ask Steve, um, as you're still here, the planted of the wooded area. So um, we've got a project um, in the list, it's just numbered number nine, Planting of wooded area off the main village car park, um, and we were talking about um, including some climate change awareness information. Is this this is obviously the same thing as Worthington Wood? And in terms of costs, um, we've our our guesstimate. I think I put something like two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, uh, Vanessa is closer to this project. I'm sure she'd be happy to speak. Um, we don't actually have particularly costs associated with this. I don't know if you want to back me up on that, Vanessa, just on the call down there. Yeah, um, the food forest project are providing all the plants and planting for free. We're involved in community work. The only future cost is likely to be a potential bridge across the brook uh, that's going to come after we've planted up the initial wood. Um, so there are no costs, really. Okay, so that's, I don't need to... Not really. That's, that's no. nothing there. Okay. London. Uh, I agree with um, Alistair actually on the uh, on the footpaths thing, in that I think a lot of the other um, projects um, are, are are very good. But I think the the, the, the great thing about um, a thing like the footpaths is that uh, in terms of um, sort of getting the community together, I think it'd be a great thing. I think a lot of people are very in favour of footpaths. Uh, and I think people are willing to muck in and, and do a bit of work on them if it's sort of organised properly. And if you can get the cash together, I think that's the, the, the always the, the, the big thing. Um, I mean, number one is the cycle route, really. But uh, uh, um, we all know the problems of that. So both Davids put their hands up there. David, okay, let's go for you. I can't hear you, no, Dave. No, me? No, no Dave Kearney. Oh, sorry. Dave. And then you. Okay. Yeah, That's okay. Right. I've, I've unmuted now, so you can hear me now. I'm yeah, I, I, no, I noticed that Sean's not here, but Sean's got a number of initiatives going on around footpaths in the village, and there's an article going into the Webmore News this month yeah. about the about the mass amble um with a meeting after the amble which is scheduled for i think it's october the 24th whatever that weekend is to try to engage the community so that we can get involved and get people involved in um in improving the footpaths in the area there's the adopt a footpath scheme which somerset county council are running which we're trying to get people involved in. So, so Sean's not here, but there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes on that. So, so uh, yeah, uh, just to update you. Okay, thank you. Dave Huxtable, you were going to say something. Well I, 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 well, I was pretty much going to reiterate what the previous speaker had said, because, you know, I, I think as a county, off the top of my head, last time I looked, we allocate about 1,500 pounds per parish to look after the footpaths. And if you consider the footpaths aren't, being looked after then that is the viable complaint to somebody else well I mean to me obviously but I mean uh, and we do have the adopt the footpath scheme lots of parishes uh, that I represent actually sort of employ somebody or perhaps don't employ somebody I mean they, they actually nominate somebody to go and keep the footpaths 
clear and it is as you suggest a very good community um a very good community activity um so i, I listening to the conversation I, I i i'd have to kind of advise that i really wouldn't like you even though it's very popular i wouldn't like you to major on footpaths because i i suspect the caddy council things uh, the caddy council would consider that that's what they do anyway and if i can use the phrase they're not terribly sexy whereas things like electric charging points photo bouquet cells and all the other things that were on your list are and i i i'm, I'm very happy to go away and and fight a corner or give you some more information um, about how to look after your footpaths or how to get the footpaths done properly and dear the opportunities for for, for um, volunteering around footpaths but um, I, I think the cycle route on the other hand is has been a long-running issue for a very long time um, I suppose if we throw through enough money at it the landlords that are the landowners that are holding us to ransom a bit on it would actually give up but um i'm not sure that's a good use of public money frankly but there we are judy um yeah thank you um i think you know green it's cycling really does hit the mark on so many levels doesn't it um you know it, it's it's not using carbon to get around and it's making us healthier but the main thing is when you i mean i think the idea of this the cycle hub and electric bikes is absolutely brilliant but the main thing when you have a bike is you've got to have somewhere to cycle haven't you so the provision of um of cycle routes has, has got to be go hand in hand with it but i i do think i do think the cycling is is hits all the green initiatives head on that's just my point Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else? So, so um, following off of David, um, David H's uh, point there, would something like the other two footpath projects, so obviously amending the footpaths, but the revamp of the web walks of Wedmore booklet, so that um, basically if those who've seen it, if you go to the Isle of Wedmore News um, website, which I know is not run by us, but if you go on there, the Walks of Wedmore pamphlet is is PDF'd onto that um, that web page. Now, all of those walks that was all done in two thousand and six, um, and that could be that booklet could be revamped um, with a walk from Thiel, which would mean if there were, if there was a viable footpath walk from sort of Thiel Bagley Mudgley Way, then all of all of the sort of corners of our parish can walk in and out um, without having to utilise the roads if. And then obviously we can follow the advice to get the footpaths mended, but one way of prioritizing the um, fixing of the footpaths is to revamp that pamphlet. Um, it was an initiative done in 2006 um, from a grant from the parish council. Emily? Oh, sorry, I'm just kind of going back to my original question to David, which, um, because it's all, again, it's all very well of us kind of saying what we would like, and you've already indicated that you think that probably footpaths aren't gonna get as much money as maybe, you know, car chargers or whatever. Um, but who, so you're not, are you making the decision, David, or do we have to, do we apply through you? Because the application form looks like we just do the application for a project. I'm still a bit, I'm still a bit confused about who, like, is there someone maybe at Somerset County Council that we could speak to about which are more likely to? Well, I, I, I think you have to let me fight your corner. I, I hate to, I don't really want to take responsibility for this, but the, the people who make the decisions, the first person they will ask about a, about a project is the local county councillor, whether that's be me or wherever they come from. So, if you give me all the projects you've got, I'm very happy with them. If you can just simply put them in some kind of order so that when I get into a kind of horse trading uh, uh, exercise with some of my colleagues, at least I can say, okay, you know, these are the really important ones to work more. That's all I'm asking for really. Um, Emily? Um, 
So, so then my other concern is just li looking at what's going on in the chat that Green Webmore um, haven't been uh, involved with our green list, which I thought they had been. Um, and then I'm also wondering um, the, the, uh, the information that Steve sent about the application that SCAN are doing, um, where they need backing from different parish councils. I was just wondering if we were going to talk about that at all tonight, because I'm aware that we're already halfway through September and the applications open on the 1st of October. Okay, Chairman, can I just say one thing? I, I, I really, I'm, I'm sort of trying to sit on my hands here uh, and I'm, it's not really working. So I think, <laughs> best, I think the best thing for me to do is actually to leave you to it this evening and let you make the decision rather than me trying to influence it. And let me know tomorrow or at your earliest opportunity um and uh we'll i'll i'm happy to take it from there is that okay with everybody yeah that's fine thank you thanks david thank you Bye. so emily that's why when we, i was talking to steve as to the question in the public section whether the green group was getting the information that's why i asked the question so clearly no you're not getting the information so you told me you were but you clearly you're not <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to make sure that our communication links are up to speed. Yeah, that's, this isn't this isn't great, yeah, so is this, it? This is a, a, bit, this is a, a bit of a, a you know, a, yeah, just feel a little bit disappointed really that those those things that we were expecting to be in place because we've got you know people. Um, so I think that's a, that's a different side issue for the parish council to look at. But um, yeah, a bit disappointed that you hadn't seen the list. Um, I've sent it to you now. Have you received it? Okay. Yeah. I saw Alistair's hand go up. Yeah, I'm just, just going back to what David was saying. I, um, I, he didn't really answer the question whether he wanted one application with lots of... Uh, no, I'll find that out. Well, I was going to say, if, in my experience, I'd put one in for each one, just simply yeah. because they'll go to different people. And if you're not careful, you, you know, the one that's on footpaths obviously goes to the highway people, whereas the, the one on charging must go to some other group and so on and so on. So based on my experience of trying to get funding out of anybody, if you put too many things on there, one, one will get priority and the others probably won't even get to see it. Okay. So, yeah, that, about these cycle racks, the new cycle racks, the way you say that we've got the ones at the George, which aren't very good at all, and we've got new ones now at the Village Hall, and we have got ones outside Pumpkin. Where else are we thinking of putting cycle racks? Because we've sort of got three already. That one came from Sean, I think, through, um, we thought through Green Webmore. Or I, I believed it was through Green Webmore. Sorry. Steve. Oh, Emily's got her hands up first. Yeah. Oh, Emily, Steve, I, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> no, I think I was just going to agree with Alistair that I, I'm, David wasn't answering my question because I can't see anything on the application form that says he's involved either. So what I want to know is, do we... Is there someone that we can find out, you know, there's no point in us putting in, you know, 15 um, applications and then only two can of them are on? relevant or... I'm getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> we heard that, Rod. <laughs> Rod, you weren't muted. I'm oh, sorry. This is, this is going, we're going round and round. We're going round and round. We're going round and round in circles. Just yeah, take, yeah, we do have to just put a priority to them now. In terms of how we fill out the application minutes. form, well, I'll sort that out. <laughs> is there a standout? Brilliant. Is there a standout one? Regardless of you know what we want to do. Is there any we don't want to do? Because we've already Steve has just indicated that actually number nine's a no-goer because they've had all the money, they need they, they don't need any more money till they come for their bridge. So number nine's off the list. Anybody want to do solar panels on the parish council roof? Hands up. I'm happy Sorry. for that. 
Yeah, you know, Thank why you. not? It's quite a good place to put them. Yes. Sorry, I missed what the question was. Do you want solar, to put panels? solar panels on the parish council roof? Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, so everybody's good for that. Is there anything on here that people are totally anti? No. Oh. No. Is there anything Green Webmore would like Jackie, to support? Hang on, on? Jackie put her hand up. The Boris bikes, hey, that's going to work. That's, um, that's basically um, Sam Brown has set, is, um, has set up an initiative. She's got agreement from the Webble Playing Fields Association to house them there. They will be electric bikes that will be borrowed um, to begin with free of charge. And it's a setup cost for electric bikes. I'm not sure the parish council roof faces south actually, Joe. So might not get the best benefit, but still. No, it faces east west, so we'll mm. get some. Emily? Okay. Well, no, you can still have an east west array, you just have okay. them on both sides, and it actually, yeah, anyway. I mean, if we're, if we're allowed to put in for all this money, I don't, yeah, let's just go for them. Most of the projects, I think which most was, of them are, are, are really good. Which is what the re uh, my recommendation was originally. Yeah. Um, um, in terms of number five then, the new cycle path to Webmore to Blackford, do you want me to put in an application for some money towards that? Or because we've still got those issues with landowners, we push that towards sale a bit more? That, that really worries me, that one, because currently there is a way for the kids to cycle to school. They can cycle up Plud Street and along Wells Way. We're still waiting for the cyclist aware signs to come. But there is a route, and I can't help but thinking the landowners potentially are still not going to go for this. So, yes, maybe still look into it, but I, I don't see it as a goer, personally, just knowing the history. Okay, and the cycle racks, um, Steve, um, in the centre of the village, I, like I said, I was led to believe that had come from Green Webmore. Is that correct? No. No, it's not a cycle rack. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, can't hear you. Cycle, um, Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a cycle repair kit. It's not actually a rack. Sean's got that wrong. Um, it's a bit of kit which has sort of a pump on it and different tools for fixing bikes. Oh, so this is not more number four, the establishment of a walking cycle hub, um, and that was going to be housed at the Swan? That's something different again. Um, okay. For <laughs> <laughs> <God's> sake. <laughs> right, I'll talk to you afterwards, Steve, about what's real. And, yeah, um, that'd be great. Right. And we're, we're, we're liaison on lists, you, me and Emily, and um, uh, in the meantime, we'll go for them all. Right, well, I, is Except everyone happy about that? Yeah, uh, we'll go with my recommendation. Brilliant. Well Still done. Happy. Thank you for your hard work, Joe, and everybody yeah, else. Well done, Joe. Brilliant. Uh, right, item number eight. Rod, we're moving on. <laughs> um, there's two. Could you shut the door again, please? Thank you. Um, I've got two here that I think I might chuck in together because we've got to consider revising the SIL policy and to consider revising the grants award policy and what I was going to suggest is perhaps a working party again for people to sit down and work it out send it to us see what we all think rather than us all sitting here and going on for hours yeah, Alistair, these are, you're the first one with your hand up uh, yes um, I've been through the community infrastructure policy and compared it again with the Sedgemoor uh, advisory note to districts and uh, parish uh, town and parish councils. And quite frankly, changing this, our policy, um, doesn't change their policy. So in other words, we can change it what we like, but if it doesn't fit with the um, Sedgemoor policy, then it seems to me a bit of a waste of time. So do we just adopt the Sedgemoor policy? As, as as our own if we've got to if we've got to work to it yeah possibly joe it's pretty much as as alistair said it's almost verbatim the sedgemoor dis i think there's been confusion over these policies the sill one is literally the district yeah. one the yeah. one people want changed is the grant one not the sill yeah. one yeah okay so is everyone happy for that for us to just 
stick as we are and adopting the, the Sedgemore one. Can I have a show of hands? It looks like a majority. Yeah, great, thank you. So if we move on to item number, let's go down here, item number nine, to consider reverse, revising the grants award policy. I, I think we possibly should have a, a, a working group. Is anyone happy with that? Yeah, Sue? I, I'd like to be on that group. Okay, anybody else? Come on, oh, well done, Judy Alistair. Yeah. Great. That'll do. Is everyone well, happy with that? Sorry, I've got yeah. oh. just to check out Sue Worrell, Alistair, and Judy. That's yeah. it. Okay, that's Thank cool. You. And then if you can, you know. Try, but I'll do it for England. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good woman. I just, yeah, and then if we, you know, you come back to us and then we can all uh, discuss it again. That's super. Thank you. Uh, item number 10 to reconsider the decision to extend the village car park okay uh, might be a controversial one but we've looked into uh, the costs of it it's expensive <laughs> shall, very shall, expensive shall uh, I help you out chairman yes please do um, Pete Brown the architect from B&B &B next to the council offices um, provided plans for the proposed uh, extension of the car park um, the cost involved, um, he's, he's had all the cost done, £165,000. And he said with all the topographical surveys and the ecological surveys, which he had to do before we put an application in for planning, um, we're not going to get any change at £200,000. Um, this is obviously a lot of money for the parish council. We'd have to borrow it. Um, and I would suggest that perhaps we reconsider the decision we made a few months ago to make a planning application. The application hasn't been made yet, but it just seems mm. an awful lot of money to spend for a few extra parking spaces when perhaps the, the field could be put to some better use. Landon, I see your hand up. You're, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry, I couldn't unmute it for some reason. Um, yeah, I, I, I think firstly we ought to work out how how many spaces are used in the existing car park, really, because I don't think I've ever been there when it's been really totally full. I think it does get used quite a lot. It's quite quite busy a lot of the time um, because I know that certainly B and B they they send their staff to go and park there. So whenever oh, I've do. been down there, it's been pretty busy. But, you know, I... Okay. Anybody else? Sue? Yeah, do we, do we just do it on a smaller scale? Because we were looking at another 35 spaces, weren't we? Which is pretty much what we've, what we've already got, isn't it? Yeah, it was 36. Um, so maybe a much smaller um, extension... Yeah, possibly. Alistair, did you want to say something? And then Judy? Well, uh, yeah, I did, because uh, on the name of plan, one of my issues was about the economy, and the economy depends on visitors using the stores that keep, keeps the people employed there and so on and so forth. Um, um, I'm not against the yellow line schemes, but uh, nevertheless, that has reduced the amount of parking that's available. And at the same time, we've got now over 100 houses being built, which uh, may well bring a few extra cars into the village as people come shopping and so on. So it's not, not a decision we should take lightly to just say, well, it's all too expensive. Um, just given the fact that we are actually adding to the pressure on car parking spaces. And maybe at the yeah. Highways Committee meeting next week, we can discuss uh, what what measures we might take to try and improve things. But it does seem to me that, um, you know, we just, if we, one of the consequences of not thinking about car parking is the loss of trade to our many uh, retail outlets. Yeah, absolutely. I hear, hear where you're coming from. And I would hope that people who, <laughs> who live on the cross farm uh, new developments who will all have car parking spaces won't be driving <laughs> into the village but the ones from the other end might uh, I've got Joe next I know I sound like a stuck record 
but do we have any other quotes? No, it's just a, it's an outline thing from B&B. And, and he, he tells me that's on the cheap side. I don't know. Well, it looks like we need to do a bit more investigating. Judy? Well, I just feel with um, the emphasis on green issues now that this is all about the motor car again, isn't it? And about parking and people driving and, you know, surely we should be spending that, that amount of money. Gosh, that would buy us a few um, footpaths and, well, cycleways. We should be going more towards the sort of um, Dutch system where you cycle around the town, and cycle around the village, not driving and parking it. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And in actual fact, you know, if we're just putting more tarmac down, there's yeah. also the, the flooding implications. Um, I think it's a backward step, myself. It's a, it's a tricky one. That's for sure. Joe. So would, would a compromise be, like, um, as already suggested, maybe a smaller car park, but um, space for these borrower bike scheme, maybe have that um, sited there, or have two sites in the village. So you could cycle up through the village and leave it at one end and cycle back down and leave it at this end, because then, you know, people utilising the car park up by the playing fields can cycle down and leave a bike down in the village car park. Those park in the village car park can utilise a bike up to the other end. So, you know, there's, there's sort of ways. There are, um, and there are, there are possibly other things we could, you know, there are yeah. other initiatives we could do with that little parcel of land, um, yeah. which maybe we need to put out there. I mean, there's no way we're, you know, racing to build a car park yeah. currently, are we? We don't necessarily have to put down a tarmac car park. We could, we, you know, we could, we could put something which is more eco-friendly i mean this matting that they they put down that they grow you grow through this rubber matting this driveway type affair yeah true very true it, yes it wouldn't have to be the fancy schmancy pants one would it we could just to provide some extra parking but yeah if, I, if I, we I, need to yeah no i so i think that i'm getting the general feeling that potentially yes we could do with a bit more parking but we need to do it in a better way um, and, a, and agreed a way and possibly have a cycling hub down there too and make it a lot nicer than a big tarmac -y lit up ex extension of the car park. Am I getting that general feeling from you all? Just a little nod? Yeah. Is this some, I think it's probably something that a council needs to get involved in and take on as a lead project. Yeah. Think. It's going to be a lot of work anybody, it. anybody fancy taking on the car park? I know it was Neil's, Neil's sort of yeah. ambition, but yeah. well, oh, Judy, don't know. Is it a question, Judy? Is that a question? <laughs> or you know, I've got wrongly about it. I suppose I better come up with some alternative ideas, haven't I? <laughs> well, that would be very nice. These yeah. are all costings, anyway. Joe, Joe, I can't hear you. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll work with Judy then. <laughs> you girls are great. I love you. <laughs> okay. That's brilliant. Okay. And, and, if, and if we can get, you know, um, ideas maybe from Vanessa and Steve about what they thought, what other alternative green issues, you know, could go there, green ideas, or how they could help us out, that would be really cool as well. What, what concerns me is that the before a planning application goes in, we will need a full topographical survey, I'm mm. told, which is what's underneath the ground, sorry, and an and ecological survey as well. And that's yeah. going to cost several thousand of pounds. Yeah, well, we're going to have to do something with it because it can't okay. stay as a pile no. of nettles, really. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing for the future. So thank you, ladies, for that, um, for volunteering. That's fabulous. Oh, no, my screen gone dead again. Holy moly, hang on. Just item number. Here we are, I'm back. Back in the room. Uh, oh, jolly good. So we're on uh, 11, financial matters. Yes, Chairman, just report that all the accounts balance this month. Um, Emily and Joe have certified they're all okay. All the, uh, bills, have been, all the bills have been paid. Brilliant, good stuff. Uh, item number 12, issues and questions raised by councillors. Right, I will start down on my screen bottom. Jackie, any issues? Oh, is she frozen? Oh. Well, she's just, oh, Jackie? We got any issues? Can you hear me? 
Right, I'll skip. Nandin, <laughs> Nandin have you got any issues? No, excellent. Uh, David? David Curley, no? No. Um, oh, I keep seeing Margaret's iPad, but it's Pete. I was going to call you Margaret. Pete, have you got any issues? Anything raised? Can't hear you. You're still muted. Well, maybe I'll take that as a no. Yeah. Pete, did you want to say something? Because you're muted. No? Okay. You lost a chance. He's probably took an after the speech. <laughs> I still can't hear you, Pete. So I'll just move on to Joe quickly. Joe? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we have um, a request from a parishioner on Rug Hill whether we can have the speed indicator devices and they will manage Ooh. them, put them up and do the speed testing on Rug Hill. Well, that sounds good. Who's got them? Uh, I've got them. Brilliant. They're sat in my office. They're extremely heavy. I don't know how they work. Whoever does it will need to go on a training course. Um, okay. Uh, so it's, it's John Woodford. Well, um, well email him. Email oh, sorry, him I, can't, I can't take yeah, that. No, can, I just, can I, before you say yes, I just need to let you know. I'll say it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he works for Wiltshire County Council, so he's doing it partly for his own learning, but also for the speed up our road. Oh. Are we all happy? <laughs> Hang on, would he be prepared to do the whole of the village? Or just cockleakers? Well, he's one I'm desperately trying to persuade to come on the council. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Well, you're going to work one. on him. But I, I think even just someone doing a bit of some, an extra bit who's volunteered to, I think that isn't a, isn't a bad plan. So I'm sure he can have them. I, uh, can't, right. I can't move the box on my own. It's too heavy. Okay. Okay. Glennis, have you got any queries? No. Um, Emily? Uh, yeah, I uh, attended the meeting that was organised by Spark Somerset yesterday. Okay. It was in David Huxtable's briefing, in his last briefing. It was all about, um, it was t uh, parishes and towns within Somerset talking about how they dealt with um, the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic and what they'd done and, and so sharing best practices I guess but also lessons learned um, I think I think what it made me realize is that we were very on top of things with Wedmore Parish Council with the little teams that we had in the different villages the fact we got a leaflet out really quickly um, with all of the volunteers and all the way that we gathered our volunteers I think you know we were kind of quite ahead of a lot of other parish councils um, but what it did make me realize is we probably need to regroup that little group because it's quite likely that there's going to be another spike and and even yeah. if there isn't it would be better that we're prepared for that because i was kind of thinking oh yeah we did that we did a really good job but actually we might be needing to do that again over the winter so i'm just wondering whether we should try and have a get together of those people that were on that little working yeah, group that's yeah it's a really good idea we'll have a meeting we'll set something up Okay, and then and then my other thing was that you know there's been a bit of negativity tonight about the proposed cycle bar, um, but we have got a little working group together who are looking at that, um, and uh, our kind of first idea is that rather than what has happened before, where people have gone to the landowners and said we want to do this, we're going to suggest that we contact anyone within you know all the landowners within that kind of try that square between the four roads and see if anyone is willing to work with us on this because actually you know there is a way to get to school not on the main road but it's not very safe Polly I cycle it every day with um yeah no, no no I know I know you know it would be and I'm so certainly not trying to be negative I just I was in the firing line last time and it's but no that sounds like a great way of doing it because we can we can try and if it's a no it's a no and then we just have to try and make the back way safer but i think we need to give it a go certainly brilliant uh judy have you got any queries anything questions um, no no i haven't just to say that i think i was going to go on that train for the um, speed awareness and i have a feeling it was quite expensive like 600 pounds or something no, like that not that much. Not so, that much? No. Oh, all right, I'll shut up then. Shut really? up. 
Yeah. <laughs> Alistair, any questions or things raised? Um, as I walk around uh, from uh, Wedmore through to uh, Blackford um, along the route that uh, has been discussed, um, I'm just wondering whether alternatives are being looked at because I can. The only reason I can see we'd want to spend two hundred thousand pounds or so uh, doing a, a small part of the route is to avoid the crossroads at the top. Is that right? The the uh, Heath House crossroads. Is that is that the uh, object? Mm, not really. I mean, it's to avoid the traffic. Really. I mean, obviously we can't. It, you know, you can't cycle along the main road if you no, go the I back road. There is there is the crossroads, but there's also, um, you know, a lot of blind corners. There's a hill. Cars go very fast because they're taking their kids to school from one school to the other, and um, so it's it's not just it's not just the crossroads. No, that's not the only yeah. issue. Because we're, we're hoping that we'll be able to take it all the way from the the lane opposite the first school all the way onto Wells Way. So it's not just going to be starting at Little Island. It'll start before that. Right. I mean, if you're coming from Coombe Batch, it's still quite a long way on the ordinary roads. Correct, yeah. Amanda, I can guarantee it is. Uh, um, the, only, the, the only thing is, you know, is, has there been any attempt to get people to cycle uh, more? Because if, if not many people are using it, it it's... It, loads of people, loads of people cycle, trust me. You only have to need to go that way on the school run and during the day, loads of people cycle that way. Lo loads of people? Yeah, masses. Both my grandchildren cycled to school. Okay. Yeah, we uh, do that paper round and we see them. <laughs> okay, right, well, let's move it's on. also a bit chicken and egg, isn't it? Once the cycleway's there, you'll probably get more people to cycle. It's a bit... Completely. You know, yeah, said, yeah, it yeah, and they will you come. need to prove that. All right. Mm. But this is, a, this is a debate for another time, guys, because uh, this is just anything being raised by councillors. Okay. Sue, you were my last one on the screen. No? Brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, correspondence? No, Chairman. Item 13. Uh, okay, item 14, committee reports. Uh, cemetery. Gladys. I went up there, I went up there this week and it, it looks fine, looks very good. I think there was a bit of an issue with the headstone, at, uh, but I think Rod knows about that. But um, yeah, it, the cemetery, it looks fine. We've attacked the Himalayan balsam again and that's been eradicated. Uh, yeah, so all is well. Great, thank you. Uh, facilities, allotments and footpaths. Um, yeah, I've been, um, I've, I've been really busy this week, but I need to get hold of Rod because I want to get the hedges cut and up around the allotments and before I get them cut I want to get the grass mown off uh, in front of them on that that uh, sort of opposite we'll, side. We'll discuss so, this tomorrow Julie, fine. Yeah, give him, just, give him a call. basically just some basic jobs need doing which I was going to address as soon as I get five minutes. I tried to okay. ring you today. Yeah. I know you did, I know you did, I'm never there, I'm always <laughs> Okay, yeah. other than that, that's, that's all right is it? Yeah. Pete, what is Pete doing with his fingers? Oh, pick his nose. No. Pete, you've got to unmute yourself or else I can't talk to you. Uh, no, right. Uh, is he on the facilities allotments or footpaths? I don't know. Mm. Finance and general purposes? Nothing at the moment. No, we haven't got anything, have we? Housing? No. No, nothing really going on there. Highways, car park and brook? We've got a meeting next week, I was going to tell you. Yeah. Uh, I'll put the agenda out tomorrow, or, third, or or on Friday anyway. Okay, nothing else? Cool. Uh, planning? Uh, well, lots, we've lots had of lots of, um, <laughs> we've had lots of, uh, as you know, the difficult, two difficult planning applications. Yeah. Recently, um, I know that on the one at Coombatch, there are 91 interested party comments. And there's over 60 going on 70 on the strong box. So strong box is still open, by the way. It's open until the 3rd of October. Okay. But the one at Coombatch is closed. Um, and um, it's in, you know, we'll have to wait and see now. 
Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> um, reports uh, from representatives on committees. Uh, Ida Webmore? Nothing to report, no. Okay. Play areas. That's me, isn't it? Uh, I think we're, having, we're trying to have a meeting next Thursday. So, so, Ollie, oh, yeah. just to interrupt on your play areas, last time there was um, um, there's a bit of confusion about who does the hedge around the Wedmore play area? Uh -huh. And it's been cut, but it's been cut on the on the outside and the top. Yeah. But it's not been cut inside. Okay. Who does that? So Is I, that don't, Will? I don't know who's That's Will. That's Maybe Will. you ran out of time. Okay, we'll get Will on it. Rod, can you get Will on yeah, it? Yeah, no problem. Super. Um Salk? Um, no, nothing at the moment. Okay. A Webmore Playing Fields Management Committee. We haven't got anyone on that, have no, we? No, nobody on that. I know they've got no. a meeting coming up anyway. Yeah, I think it's soon. Yeah, soon. Anyway. Okay. Uh, village Halls? Who's Village Halls? Alistair? Um, yeah, the, uh, the Webmore Village Hall is now open and uh, a number of bookings have been received. So, uh, um, in some ways, it's quite good to see the income stream start again. Um, it, it's obviously done with the full recommendations for COVID, and um, we're hoping that this will continue. But uh, it's it's strictly limited: no children's parties, no groups more than thirty, and so on. So it's um, it's sort of half a, half half speed ahead. Okay, super, Pete. Oh, yeah. Pete, you look like you've unmuted. Hello. Hello. I don't know what I, I, I've done. I haven't done anything. No, I, um, oh, you're, you're back on. Yes, Webmore uh, Blackford is, uh, yes, opening opening up. We've had several uh, meetings and uh, they've been very positive. And I think the first one is, uh, well, within the next week is uh, the first of the new bookings have come in. Yeah. Great. That's good news. Normal, some new normal thing, things are coming back and resuming, which is brilliant. And who's uh, Theon? Is that Sean? Yes, it is. I, I, think, I think we've got some major um, sort of works to be done inside the hall there. Mm, okay. Well, it's yours. Twinning. Judy, that's you, isn't it? Nothing? Uh, um, no, two weeks not... isolation. Yeah, keep them Frenchies away. <laughs> Yeah, nothing on at the moment. <laughs> okay. And Green Wedmore. Uh, Sean's not here. Oh, oh yes. Okay. <laughs> there we are. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody. Uh, item number 15, matters of report for uh, items for the next meeting. Have you, you anything, Chairman? No, I haven't. Not yet. I don't think so. Nor me. Nor the members. We'll get so. you stuff. Don't you worry. Oh, Joe's waving her hand away. Oh, yes, Joe. Joe. So, um, as some of you are aware, because I've spoken to a couple of people, that I've been putting together a spreadsheet of all of the projects that have come past our door um, as ideas, so that maybe we can um, look at them in terms of priority. Obviously, we've been discussing the Green Initiative's priorities, but we've got the SIL um, ideas that Alistair's been working on as well. So, and obviously grant requests and various other bits and pieces. Um, so I put together a spreadsheet. So if, if people were interested, maybe we could put that on the agenda next time. Okay, um, you do like know, a spreadsheet. I know Isabel has <laughs> asked about street lighting. She wanted to discuss it this time, but she, wants, she said put it over to the next one. Okay, too, but there was something I wanted to discuss at the next one, yeah. but I've forgotten. Well, there oh. we it'll come, don't worry, it'll come back to me. Um, right, okay. Um, well, that clears that up. We are now going to head into... Oh, Emily. Oh, no, I was just going to say, Polly, it wasn't what you said earlier about the unitary discussions, was it? Yes. You said add that to the... Brilliantly. We need to have a chat about the unitary, so I need to get some paperwork out to you all to, to read all about it, really. But, yeah, I'll work What's on that. Agenda? Uh, we'll think about it. Oh, it does, but yeah, okay. <laughs> right.